All right, so we just got his body on there, and he's a little bit tough to look at, but um, we've got his arm on here all sewed up. Some metal sticking out. And if you wanted to get even goopier in there, you could certainly do that. And we've got his boots down here from the boot tutorial. There's a couple different resources if you want to make exactly this pair of boots. If you go to my ArtStation page, we've got a boot ZBrush tutorial. It goes through the video. It's 18 videos on how to make this boot. I've also got this breakdown here, this image that you can just basically follow through step by step. And of course, on my YouTube channel, there's the boot tutorial here. And if you want to download those for free, you can always go to my Gumroad page. And for example, the boot tutorials zero bucks. You can go grab that or my cube brush page. You can go through here and grab those tutorials for free. But let's take a look here. Lower body we kind of already talked about. Uh, the boots are much the same. I used a ground mud and a ground dirt to kind of give it some muddy splatter. His skin was really fun to do. And let's go ahead and break that down. I'm going to hide this wear here. So I started out with the skin simple, and I think if we just type in skin here, skin human is what I used, I started out with. Uh, and it's got some very good stuff in here. I did do a, quite a bit of modifications to this, so he, by its default it's not going to look exactly like this. I, I changed quite a bit because I put stuff layered on top of it and that kind of changed the base functionality of this. But for the most part, it's just a really nice way to kind of break up your skin here. And you can go through it and change all of this stuff if you want to. I also added a moles, and these are just procedural moles uh, that I just used a fill layer here with black and white spots, change the histogram position, give it a little bit more contrast, and then the on top of that, I did a color gradient just to give them a little bit of color variation, and then I dropped the base color down quite a bit, 47 it looks like. And actually, now that I see that, um, I just used... <laughs> This fill layer was basically black and white spots and a gradient just to kind of break up this brown color. And then the actual moles themselves are being brought in by stains. And that I was able to control the amount of moles. So I can just crank up that amount and just start populating moles. I guess if you want to do chicken pots or pimples, you could use this as well. And you can do the hardness value to kind of get what you want. And also, you know, blurred them a little bit. I went through and painted out any ones I didn't like. And that's the mole set up. And you can give that as much height or as much color as you want to. It's basically just a way to kind of just add some stuff to his skin here. Now, the color, the general color breakup, I try not to paint at all if I can help it. But, you know, in cases of skin, it's useful to just go in there and just kind of paint what you want. So I did wear, like, straps. You know, if you look at stretch marks and stuff, you can kind of get some irritated skin around these areas. I gave him some bruises that I just painted in. Uh, painted in the breakup around his mouth and his eyes and it looks like he has eyeshadow on right now but that was just a base color a little rouge in his cheeks but that's just to kind of show blood pooling on his body and then of course like greens and purples where he's been bruised up quite a bit he's been chafed the ammo ammo on his back is kind of rubbing against his skin so you can kind of do a little bit of that kind of stuff right there and I'm pretty sure what I used for that was just like a paint spray or possibly a dirt dirt too or a Dirt One brush, just to kind of brush those colors onto him. And you can always use, uh, this is just a normal, but you can also multiply these colors, you can overlay them, color dodge, whatever you what works for you. And the color detail breakup, if I kind of toggle that on and on, uh, that's really just another color breakup. I went in and just added, what does it look like, stuff around his eyes, a little bit in his armpits and his nipples, and just added some big veins in his body around his temples and in his shoulders and stuff like that and in his uh, biceps and then uh, the blood seam I put on the side of his eye there he's got a little cut down his eye and of course this is the kind of stuff where you can add height as you paint you can add particles as you paint and have it drip if you want to it's all up to you you can get as fancy as you want I also did a tattoo pass and there's a little bit of warp and blur on these tattoos that I basically just put on there this is kind of a tattoo pass. I figure this guy's probably got some tattoos. Uh, squiggles is an interesting one. So if I go in here, uh, I remember watching, it was a like a Master FX magazine video with Jordi Shell, and he was basically painting a mask. And what he would do with his airbrush is do all these little squiggles. So what I did with this guy is I just did squiggles, and I'm going to crank this up. This is on a multiply fill. And it's pretty subtle on this guy. If I was doing creature -y stuff, I'd probably make it a little bit less subtle. So I turn all these squiggles off here. You're going to see here's my base body. And then as I add red squiggles, it just starts breaking up um, the surface a little bit. And if you want to make it more obvious, you can. 
But all that is is just a plasma with a gradient to kind of break up the red and the yellow. And then that's my red squiggles. And then every time I did a squiggles layer, since they're just multiplying together, what I made sure to go do is go to the fill layer and then just hit random seed just to randomly generate where the plasma goes so it's not building up the exact same pattern. Um, you know what? I guess we can just do one real quick. Let's do a fill layer here. And I'll just go ahead. On this fill layer, I'll do a fill. And on this fill, I just want it to control the color. And in that color, so I'll reset the UI again, and we'll go into plasma under procedurals, and we'll just drop that into the base color for the fill. And if we do the distance, that'll actually start tiling that plasma a little bit more, as well as going up here to your UV and start tiling that. And if you want to not have it go across seams, you can try doing the triplanar projection. Uh, the UV projection seems to be working okay. I'll just keep it that way. And then you can change your histogram position and contrast to just get more or less of just the squiggly lines. You just want to do some squiggles like this. And I'm going to make this one super obvious. And then once you have that fill, you can change the black and white values of your fill. I'm going to do a filter. And with this filter, I'm going to do a gradient. And I'm only going to have the gradient affect the color underneath it. So color one, I just want to be white. And then the squiggles, I want those to be, you know, make those red. And then if I make this, you know, this fill layer, I'll do, I can just turn off everything but color. And in fact, even if I turn off color, it's not going to really affect anything. But we'll make this fill layer a multiply. And then we can drop that opacity down if we want to. And then if we want to duplicate this one, we can go ahead and make this color. Um, instead of going in here to the gradient and changing this color, all you really need to do, let's go ahead. I mean, it's easier to do that. But if you want to, you can add another filter, hue saturation. We'll just have it affect the color. And in here I can change the hue to like a greener or a bluer maybe. And right now these squiggles are right on top of each other. So what I need to do is go to this fill with the plasma, hit random seed, and that'll go ahead and squiggle them in a different pattern. So you can kind of just layer those up and get a nice kind of creature look like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn those off. I kept it super subtle on this particular guy, but it is just nice to kind of break up his skin like that. Um, under the eyeball... I've just basically painted in a good eye, a cloudy eye on this side where the plug plugs in. I think he got a little bit messed up here. There's his mouth and his teeth and his gums. And then I painted in some shininess on his face, some roughness, and then the steel added some nails, nail paint. And then I did another round of color breakup just to kind of break him up. And then I added some hair. I just painted the hair in. And if I was to do this correctly, I'd definitely add hair cards, but this again was just a day, day job. so. Kept it simple. And then subsurface scattering is basically just a fill with my transmissive. And then if I wanted to, I could run a levels on that. But really, I just kind of painted over where I wanted that. If I just want to see that, uh, of course, you've got to go in here. And if this is all in the, the specifics of this is all in the painter quick start in my uh, reptile series, actually, I go in a lot into this. Um, but of course, you need to add a transmissive channel. Just kick plus and then hit a transmissive channel. And then you need to load in under your viewer settings. Under your, shader param under your shader, you need to do the PBR SSS, which you can download from the substance share we talked about earlier. Add a turn on transmissive map, turn on subdermal color, make that whatever you want. So then when the shadow passes around, you get a little bit of fake SSS in there. And if you want to see that, you just hit C and just keep toggling through, toggling through C until you see a transmissive map. I could have cleaned this up a little bit more. It's pretty broad, especially around the hands. And in fact, I thought I did <laughs> clean this up a little bit more, uh, but apparently I didn't. So I probably need to go back through and fix that. Um, but anyway, it just adds a little bit of something and then where. So if we go back to all, bring it all back. Like so, looking good. And if I want to do a quick beauty render, I can throw all of this with this icon right here. I can throw all of this into iRay. And then you can go into your dome. You can change the environment that you're using to... To light this guy right now, I'm just using the default. I've got a clear color loaded in, so I don't see the environment. But sometimes it's fun to turn that off. Let's go ahead and change that panorama to like a, a street here. So now he's sitting on a street. He's got some ground uh, shadows here. And again, the controls are the same thing as Painter, and you can hold down Shift and right-click. And then I'm on my laptop, and I'm recording, so it's not exactly as fast as it could be if you're on a monster machine. You can crank up your max samples, your max time, max time. Uh, a lot of different things in here you can change. Again, I go more in depth than this on my other videos, but 
if you want to get fancy let's go in here and we'll do an overhead view and right here we've got an aperture so if I crank this aperture up it's gonna start blurring wherever the camera focus isn't if I want to focus the camera I have to hold down control and then middle click and that'll set the focal distance I believe there we go so I control middle clicked on the head that set the camera focal distance so it'll focus in on his head and then the aperture controls how much fuzziness the rest of the image gets depending how far away from the camera you are of course you can turn that off turn the aperture to zero and also do depth of field down here in your post effects um, but it's also nice to kind of just render that through iray so let's turn that aperture down we can just let this run for a bit you can also turn on reflectivity and glossiness of the bottom layer if it's like a studio he's in a studio setting or something and we can just rotate the environment round We can put them on a patio. We can change the environment exposure if you want to kind of over crank it just a bit. And again, if you don't want to see the background, just turn on a clear color. Pick a color of your liking. I just did a dark gray. And just let this run. Of course, you can do file export. Export your textures and assign them in V-Ray, Redshift, Octane, Keyshot, whatever your render of choice is. And you can just go render it in that program. But iRay is a really quick solution. to just kind of a one button click, change some parameters and get a really nice render. And of course, the longer you let this sit, the better it's going to look. Uh, so hope that was useful. Again, I'm going to do a more thorough, in-depth creation of this entire guy. And now we're back in the regular painter interface here. And if you want to, if you want to do beauty renders in painter, you just hit tab. And then that'll just go ahead and hide everything. And then you can just do screenshots from here. But anyway, I hope that was useful. It's just a basic walkthrough. And uh, like I said before, I'll do more in-depth videos as I get around to it. And uh, thanks for watching.